Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutors feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Most countries are affected by labor migration. In many rural places, the traditional extended family has been undermined by the need for family members to migrate to towns as an economic necessity. Migration, therefore, presents a major challenge everywhere to social and economic policy. Tidal energy, also known as tidal power, is a renewable source of energy and a form of hydropower used to generate electricity from the energy of the tides. Though not currently widely utilized, due to high costs and limited availability, it can be called the energy resource of the future given the current rate of depletion of energy resources.
In attempts to understand the very nature of our reality, physicists sure have some mind-bending theories. Like what if information is a tangible and fundamental aspect of physical reality itself alongside matter and energy? Or, alternatively, what if information is the fifth state of matter? Blue whales are the largest living mammals. Though reports of maximum length and weight vary from one account to another, Antarctic blue whales are known to have reached lengths to 100 feet and weights of over 150 tons before stocks were severely depleted by whaling operations. North Atlantic blue whales may be expected to reach lengths of 80 to 85 feet. Calcium plays an extremely important role in the production of plant tissues and enables plants to grow better. It is responsible for keeping the cell walls of plants together. It is also crucial in activating signals that coordinate certain cellular activities. Calcium also increases the resistance to external attacks and increases the feed value of forage crops to livestock.
conscientiousness is a fundamental personality trait. A conscientious person is good at self-regulation and impulse control. This trait influences whether you will set and keep long-range goals, deliberate over choices, behave cautiously or impulsively, and take obligations to others seriously. You may need to purchase an academic gown before the commencement. You may need to purchase an academic gown before the commencement. She glanced nervously around the bush and back at him. She glanced nervously around the bush and back at him. Today's lecture on modern American literature has been cancelled. Today's lecture on modern American literature has been cancelled. Please submit your term papers to the general office. Please submit your term papers to the general office. The scheme has been fraught with problems from the start. The scheme has been fraught with problems from the start. Students are not allowed with mobile phones in the examination hall. Students are not allowed with mobile phones in the examination hall. There is only one conclusion to this line of thought. There is only one conclusion to this line of thought. We blanch almonds by soaking their skins in boiling water.
We blanch almonds by soaking their skins in boiling water. Don't drink any alcohol even if you drive carefully. Don't drink any alcohol even if you drive carefully. The first step was to establish a baseline of known distances. The first step was to establish a baseline of known distances.
but you can see from the relatively crooked and narrow streets of the city of Rome as they look from above today, you can see that again, the city grew in a fairly ad hoc way, as I mentioned. It wasn't planned all at once. It just grew up over time, beginning in the 8th century BC. Now this is interesting. Because what we know about the Romans is when they were left to their own devices and they could build the city from scratch, they didn't let it grow in an ad hoc way. They, they structured it in a, in a very care, very methodical way. That was basically based on military strategy, military planning. The Romans they couldn't have conquered the world without obviously having a masterful military enterprise. And they everywhere they went on their various campaigns, their various military campaigns. They would build, build camps and those camps were always laid out in a very geometric plan along a grid, usually square or rectangular. For centuries, boys were top of the class. But these days, that's no longer the case. A new study by the OECD, a club of mostly rich countries, examined how 15-year-old boys and girls performed at reading, mathematics, and science. Boys still score somewhat better at maths, and in science the genders are roughly equal. But when it comes to the students who really struggle, the difference is stark. Boys are 50% more likely than girls to fall short of basic standards in all three areas. Researchers suggest that doing homework set by teachers is linked to better performance in maths, reading, and science. Boys, it appears, spend more of their free time in the virtual world. They are 17% more likely than girls to play collaborative online games than girls every day. They also use the internet more. Third, peer pressure plays a role. A lot of boys decide early on that they are just too cool for school which means they're more likely to be rowdy in class. Teachers mark them down for this. In anonymous tests, boys perform better. In fact, the gender gap in reading drops by a third when teachers don't know the gender of the pupil they are marking. So what can be done to close this gap? Getting boys to do more homework and cut down on screen time would help. But most of all, abandoning gender stereotypes would benefit all students. Boys in countries with the best schools read much better than girls. And girls in Shanghai excel in mathematics. They outperform boys from anywhere else in the world.
What's the calendar that follows the movement of the moon? What's the calendar that follows the movement of the moon? Lunar calendar. What do we call a scientist who studies planets and stars? What do we call a scientist who studies planets and stars? Astronomer. What do we call a person who lives permanently? What do we call a person who lives permanently? Immortal. Who flies an airplane? Who flies an airplane? Pilot. What do we call a group of sheep or birds? What do we call a group of sheep or birds? Flock. What do we call a political institution or body that is responsible for a country? What do we call a political institution or body that is responsible for a country? Government.
Frogs are a diverse and largely carnivorous group of short-bodied, tailless amphibians composing the order Anura. The oldest fossil proto-frog appeared in the early Triassic of Madagascar, but molecular clock dating suggests their origins may extend further back to the Permian, 265 million years ago. Frogs are widely distributed, ranging from the tropics to subarctic regions, but the greatest concentration of species diversity is found in tropical rainforests. There are approximately 4,800 recorded species, accounting for over 85% of extant amphibian species. They are also one of the five most diverse vertebrate orders. Besides living in fresh water and on dry land, the adults of some species are adapted for living underground or in trees. Adult frogs generally have a carnivorous diet consisting of small invertebrates, but omnivorous species exist and a few feed on fruit. Frogs are extremely efficient at converting what they eat into body mass. They are an important food source for predators and part of the food web dynamics of many of the world's ecosystems. The skin is semi-permeable, making them susceptible to dehydration, so they either live in moist places or have special adaptations to deal with dry habitats. Frogs produce a wide range of vocalizations, particularly in their breeding season, and exhibit many different kinds of complex behaviors to attract mates, to fend off predators and to generally survive. Frog populations have declined significantly since the 1950s. More than one-third of species are considered to be threatened with extinction and over 120 are believed to have become extinct since the 1980s. The number of malformations among frogs is on the rise and an emerging fungal disease, chytridiomycosis, has spread around the world. Conservation biologists are working to understand the causes of these problems and to resolve them. Frogs are valued as food by humans and also have many cultural roles in literature, symbolism and religion.
Hey, Jeff, have you been to the new library yet? Oh, hi, Jane. Yes, I went last week to check it out. I really like it. Yes, I like it too. I like the study areas. There seemed to be a lot of room to just spread out and focus on the books. It's way better than the old library where it seemed like we were all jammed into one area. Sometimes it was even hard to find a spot to study because it was so crowded, especially during exams. I even like the chairs at the new place. They're super comfy. You're right. The only bad thing about it is that it's pretty far away. It takes me about 20 minutes to get there by bus. So I can see myself not going all the way downtown. If I'm in a pinch for time, I'd probably just stay in residence and study there. I was thinking that too. It's too bad. It takes so long to get there. I don't like being dependent on the buses. Have you tried riding your bike there? It might take a little longer, but at least you're getting a bit of exercise. That's a good idea, Jen. Maybe I'll try riding this week. I just have to make sure I'm good and rested. Sometimes when I'm overtired. I'm not too coordinated knowing me I'd have a load of books on my backpack and get distracted by something and crashed my bike. Well, you've just got to keep an eye out for those potholes. Oh, wow, look at the time I've got to get to my next class. I'll see you around. Jeff, good talking to you. Jen, I'll be seeing you. Class biology is considered one of the natural sciences. It is the science of life and life's processes. And like life science is better understood by observing it than by trying to create a precise definition. Over the next 15 weeks, we will be observing the science of biology. In many ways, biology is the most demanding of all sciences. This is partly because living systems are so complex. Biology is also a multidisciplinary science. It requires knowledge of chemistry, physics, and mathematics. And of all the sciences, biology is the most linked to the social sciences and humanities. The word science comes from a Latin verb, meaning to know science as a way of knowing. It emerges from our curiosity about ourselves and our world. Striving to understand is one of our basic drives who are scientists. Scientists are people who ask questions about nature and who believe that these questions can be answered. Scientists are explorers who are passionate about discovery. This course has something for all of you to discover. If you're a biology major or a pre-medical student, you'll discover ways to become a better scientist.
If you're a physical science or engineering major, you'll discover in biology many applications for what you've learned in your other science courses. The New South Wales government has apologised for yesterday's transport chaos in and around Sydney Harbour during the visit of the Queen Mary II and the Queen Elizabeth II. Roads were jammed. Traffic ground to a halt while tram and ferry services were swamped with thousands of additional passengers, with most services delayed for hours. Premier Maurice Humer says that plans were put in place to deal with the congestion but the number of visitors well exceeded expectations. On the harbour itself there seemed to be as much congestion as there was on the roads, but everyone agreed it was an amazing spectacle. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You look worried. Is there any problem? You can share it with me. Actually I am worried about my exams. There is only one week left for it. And I think I have not studied anything. I'm feeling nervous. Oh, 
Just focus on your studies and you won't face any problem. That's the problem. I can't concentrate. These all happened to me too and hence I started meditating. It had a radical effect on my concentration power. Thank you so much for your advice. I will surely follow it. Okay then bye. I'll meet you soon. Bye bye. The spinal cord the link between the brain and the body is a band of nervous tissue about the thickness of your little finger that runs through the backbone. Nerve cells called motor neurons convey electric impulses that travel from the brain to the spinal cord, branching off at the appropriate point and passing to the various parts of the body. Similarly, sensory neurons transmit messages from organs and tissues via the spinal cord to the brain but the spinal cord also functions without the brain having to intervene. It alone controls those actions called spinal reflexes that need to be carried out very fast in response to danger. A hurricane is a massive storm system. In fact, it's the most powerful type of storm on Earth. Hurricanes form over warm tropical waters and frequently move toward land.
Ah, before I forget to mention this, hurricanes are also called typhoons or cyclones. It depends on where exactly they form. Not all hurricanes are alike. Some are well, more powerful than others. Meteorologists have a rating system for them. They use the term category to rank. Every hurricane that forms the scale ranks hurricanes according to their wind speed and ability to cause damage. A Category 1 hurricane is the weakest. A Category 5 hurricane is the most powerful. A hurricane typically begins as a tropical storm. It has wind speeds between 50 to 100 km per hour. When the wind blows faster than 100 km per hour, the tropical storm has become a hurricane. A Category 1 hurricane's winds are between 100 to 130 km per hour. A Category 2 hurricane has winds up to 160 km per hour. Winds between 160 and 185 km per hour indicate a Category 3 hurricane. A Category 4 hurricane has wind speeds up to 220 km per hour. Anything above that is a Class 5 hur. Again, thankfully, those are quite rare. They are simply devastating when they form and make landfall. Oh, by the way, before you ask typhoons and cyclones use different measuring systems. So what I just described only applies to hurricanes. Eve all probably heard about zoning laws, but many people are confused about what they are someone like to cover them. Now, local governments, such as cities and counties, typically pass zoning laws. They regulate how people use the land in certain parts of the city or country. Think about our city for a moment. It's divided into various districts. Some are commercial while others are residential. This isn't accidental. It's intentional. This city developed this way because of zoning laws. You see in the commercial district, there are businesses. And in the residential district, there are houses and departments. You can't open a factory in the residential district, and you can't direct an apartment building in the commercial district. You can't do these things because of zoning laws. There were actually quite a number of zones, as I just stated. There are residential and commercial zones. There are also industrial, agricultural, and recreational zones. Industrial zones are for factories and other manufacturers. Agricultural zones are for farms, and recreational zones are for parks, lakes, and sporting facilities. So why do we need the zones? Well, think of it like this. Would you like a factory located right next to your house? How about a huge farm next to the shopping mall downtown? Or what about a big warehouse with lots of trucks next to the park? Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's why we have zoning laws. 
They keep various buildings or businesses out of places where they don't belong. I have a problem with my political science class. Literally. I know nothing about it and regret taking it. I should have dropped the class. Calm down. James students take classes to learn. I know. But I am so clueless. I am just not so into the politics constitution and laws and again the words are so confusing to me. Jane. Let me tell you something based on my experience. You just need to try. You know the words may sound difficult, but they are not at all that difficult. Once you get familiar with the vocabulary basic laws and events political science is a very interesting and easy subject. On top of that, you have me to help you. Do you really think so? Yes, I'm sure everything's up to you. If you think positively and put effort into it, everything will become easy.
class today we will talk about Roman doctors at the beginning of the first century. As we noted in our previous class, there was a 15-year-long war after Julius Caesar was assassinated. The war was severe, the number of injured was so many. There were so many that it became one of the top priorities of the new emperor to give medical care to those in need. It was around this time that the new emperor Augustus started thinking about upgrading the status of doctors. He realized that medical care was key to the empire, and especially an army. In order to improve the medical system, he needed better doctors. So he started making the profession look more enticing. All army doctors were entitled to attend the new army medical school and were given dignified titles, land grants and special retirement benefits. Before this, doctors had a fairly low status. In the 19th century, there were several periods when large numbers of people moved from one place to another around the world. In many cases, people moved to another continent. These mass migrations were on a much larger scale than any previous migrations in history. One major movement was from Europe to the Americas, Australia and Africa. This migration of Europeans involved around 60 million people over 100 years. Another mass migration was from Russia to Siberia and Central Asia. Another was from China, India and Japan to Southeast Asia. These large movements of people were made possible by the new cheap and fast means of Bread and cereals have a long history. The first bread was made in the Nile Valley about 10,000 years ago. The people used stones to crush the grain into coarse flour, and then they made the flour into primitive forms of bread. Primitive bread was not like the bread we know today, because it was simply flour dough dried on heated stones. The invention of ovens came later. Leaven breads and cakes, which are made to rise by the action of yeast, 
were also a discovery of the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptians were the first people to master the art of baking. News of this new wonder food spread to other places in the Middle East. Soon, other people were collecting seed, cultivating land and inventing ways to turn grain into flour. Baking used to be a social activity. While some homes had their own ovens, many families had to bake their dough in communal bakeries to identify their loaves. Each household would make a distinctive mark on the bread, sometimes with a special stamp bearing the family. Although the original American Indian cultures were highly diverse, they were similar in many of their traditions. Religious beliefs and rituals permeated every aspect of Indian life. Southwest tribes such as the Hopi and the Apaches had a rich and elaborate year-round sequence of ceremonials including songs, dances, and poetry. The Hopi performed dances to bring rain. The Apaches engaged in special dances and ceremonies to gain support of the spirits before undertaking raids or going into war. The Plains tribes often sought contact with the spirits by going on a vision quest. Stem cells are the body's master cells, the raw material from which we are built. Unlike normal body cells, they can reproduce an indefinite number of times and, when manipulated in the right way, can turn themselves into any type of cell in the body. The most versatile stem cells are those found in the embryo at just a few days old. This ball of a few dozen stem cells eventually goes on to form everything that makes up a person. In 1998, James Thompson announced that he had isolated human embryonic stem cells in the laboratory.
The main problem is the increase of plagiarism exacerbated by the Internet. The main problem is the increase of plagiarism exacerbated by the Internet. Some people regarded it as care, while others regarded it as recklessness. Some people regarded it as care, while others regarded it as recklessness. Weather patterns have changed significantly over the past 200 years. Weather patterns have changed significantly over the past 200 years. Tutors will arrange to meet all new students next week. Tutors will arrange to meet all new students next week.
Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today. Thank you.